guys so today is the day of my pregnancy announcement so my pregnancy so far has been really really good look at your butt I'm really, really thankful for having you. Today is Vanessa's baby birthday. <sighs> All right, I'm ready. Ready? I'm ready, I'm ready. Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. Uh, I can't talk too loud because the baby's sleeping, but hopefully you can hear me. Uh, today we're talking about, it's very well overdue, but we're going to be, <laughs> talking about the birth story of Zani and take you through the end of my pregnancy and all the details that you guys don't know and I've had lots of questions so let's do it let's take a, a trip down memory lane shall we so basically I was like keeping you guys informed up until my third trimester so my first trimester was awesome my second trimester was awesome and in hindsight, my third trimester was awesome as well because we're all here and we're all healthy. But there were a few, um, a couple of hiccups and hurdles that we overcame. So in the third trimester, so from 32 weeks, I had a cyst in my ovary that was growing with the baby. And in at 32 weeks, I started experiencing like, hectic pain and I didn't know if it was labor or like what the hell was going on and I was like in so much pain that the first time we called yeah I think the first time we called an ambulance and then the second time we sort of just let it go away yeah so the first time we called an ambulance they came they're like you're not in labor and the pain had subsided and I was like what the fuck was that so we went to the obstetrician and he like measured my cyst and my cyst had it kept like disappearing and coming back and shrinking. Mm. It was my the so cyst that was. Ba basically, she had a fluid cyst within her ovary, and that fluid cyst isn't sinister. Um, it's just something that just obviously just fills up the fluid, and then it can it can burst or it can be removed. Um, and then when we did go through the uh, the cesarean, um, the cyst was actually had actually removed, and there was like a little bit of. I guess scarring that was just stitched up. Yeah, so it did burst, and so an eight centimeter cyst burst in me while I was pregnant. My feet were a situation, so my feet started blowing up, and that's like a clear indication of a condition called preeclampsia. So I was getting um, closely monitored towards the end for preeclampsia, and um, it's very dangerous if you do get it, so they keep a very close eye on you. So yeah, I was doing blood tests and urine tests every second day and it looked as though it was going to head down that road. So basically, um, this was meant to give birth three days later. So we were meant to give birth on the 24th and then on the 19th we went in and they were like, okay, we're going to bring it forward three days. Um, so we brought it forward to three days and they just wanted it throughout. And they're like, okay, it's obviously not preclaimed at the moment, but because there are a couple of, uh, there are slightly, inc there is a slight increase of proteins in your urine, it can head towards preclaimed. And the thing with preclaimed yeah, is, even though um, the doctors say, oh, we didn't have it and we're all safe throughout everything, um, if there are signs that that could progress into preclaimed here, uh, it can escalate very quickly within 24 to 48 hours. Yep, so we just were safe and we got her out early. I ate a lot of Nutella. <laughs> Towards the end, I was just resting a lot and taking it easy. And that's exactly what I needed because I got to the end and there were, you know, no major complications. And I gave a, I had a safe delivery via C-section. And I regret nothing in that. That was such a good option for us. Um, mm. It was, initially elected so i did elect a cesarean but i would have had to have had one anyway um it turns out so lucky i had my head around that because i would have ended up having to have, have one so many so many people like i need to go through a natural birth and 
initially I was always like, you know, we want to go through a natural birth. I was coming from the um, perspective of it being an easier recovery recovery process. Yeah, so I was like, okay, natural birth, I can have her moving within, you know, hours pretty much rather than have her bed, like lying in a bed for X amount of time. Um, but at the same time, if she would have went through a natural birth, that probably would have prolonged things, you know, a lot more. Um, especially after the doctor said, hey, things probably need to go cesarean. Cesarean one. Yeah. Just on that note as well, like, whatever option you do choose, that's entirely up to you. And there's no wrong or right, there's answer. No wrong or right answer. You've got to address your situation. Like, hey, a natural birth would be awesome in hindsight. Like, I would have loved it. Um, I'm sure you would. Yeah, and that's, I would have loved it because I didn't have to go through it. So I do sympathize on, on the women that have to go through it. But at the same time, that might not be the best option for you. Okay, so we'll take everyone through the night, the, the days leading up. Mm. So Giorgio's birthday was on the day before Zani's birthday. So he turned 30 the day before Zani was born. So we had your birthday and I was literally in bed the whole time because I was on bed rest, I'm very sorry. Yeah, I came, we, we cut a cake for him at his auntie's house, but I remember I was sitting on the couch with my legs up and people yeah. were massaging me. Her feet were like this big. It was so lit. <laughs> Um, so the two nights before I gave birth, I was experiencing for the first time in my life, panic attacks. Like I've never had one and I didn't understand them, but now I do because I was panicking. So we celebrated my birthday Monday night and I remember coming home and you were just like, oh man, I can't sleep. Eh? And tossing and turning, tossing and turning. And you I were was, trying to do deep breaths with me? No, that was the night after. Oh. Then the night after, I was like, wow, this is actually going to happen tomorrow. Um, and then I started seeing this completely different nurse, like one that was like, oi, I need your help. So I was like, okay, <laughs> let's do meditation. And she would blink at meditation normally. And she's like, okay, yep. I was like, all right, let's do some deep breaths. So we're breathing, doing breathing exercises. I was like, it's not working. <laughs> And we're trying everything possible. And I remember waking up. Waking up. So I had my alarm on for 4am and I hadn't even gone to sleep. And I was looking at my clock and it was like, bing, bing, 4am. I was like, mm. let's wake up. So the first reason was I love my sleep. So I knew my whole life and my whole sleep schedule, the way I like it, it's very selfish, but I knew that was about to go out the window. Second reason, I watched many cesareans. cesareans yeah something that i advise you definitely do not do i i liked it I, I was watching cesareans like the whole thing and i wanted to know exactly what happens i watched all the gory parts and everything and um yeah so i just was just thinking wow i'm just gonna be awake the epidural was the spinal tap was freaking me out like i didn't want a needle in my spine i've heard horror stories about that I was just like, <laughs> and I panicked a lot. So that night was not the best. So then we woke up on the Wednesday and we were really excited. And I was just ready to just do it, just to stop panicking. So we got there and you were still panicking. I was still panicking. <laughs> she was panicking hard. And, um, and that was the first, like, I always say, um, you know, I wish I could swap situations. Like, whenever someone's, like, you know, like, a bit of a rut, I was like, I wish I could swap the situation because I feel like I can get out of it. But in that circumstance, I was like, I do not want to swap this situation. So I was getting a spinal block? Yeah, a spinal block. I couldn't think of anything worse than that. So Yeah, very... so the spine, they had to do my spinal block twice. So the first time, he couldn't get it. And he hit a nerve and it shot down into my butt and I screamed and he shit himself <laughs> more than me. Like, wow. <laughs> you got so scared, hey? Yeah. And I did too. And then they did the second one and that one worked, thank God. And then I went numb and that was like mm. the best, going numb because you don't feel anything. Then they started and then I knew, because I had watched so many videos, I knew everything they were doing. I knew when they were like burning it to open it. I knew when they were getting yeah, it. Yeah, she was like, talk, because I wasn't down that end, obviously. I was like, <laughs> the end where she was. 
and she was talking me through what they're doing and I was like, okay, and she goes, and we're about to hear a cry. Because they started pushing on me and I was like, we're, we're close, we're gonna hear. They, they get the baby out in the cesarean by pushing them out on the top of your tummy. And I was like, oh my God, we're ready for it. We're gonna hear a cry. And then in like four seconds, three seconds, two seconds, and then we hear, so we hear the first cry of Zani and my doctor pulls up the baby. I was very, very swollen and very like, I thought she'd be a big baby because I was so big. So then- And, and that's, a, that's another thing, like I hear everyone when they're like, they go through the scans like, oh, yeah, she's weighing at like 2.8 or 2.9. I remember we heard like 2.9 at like six weeks or something. Six, no, six weeks to go. And I was like, oh, okay, you know, what does that mean? They're like, oh yeah, she's gonna be normal weight, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. She came out at like 2.6. <laughs> so they they hold up the baby, and I'm looking, and he goes, "You have a very skinny baby," mm. and we were like, "What the fuck?" And I was thinking, wow, so sure, I was just huge and she was small. And then she had like a full head of hair and... Um, full. Yeah, it was so cute. And then Giorgio went around and he cut the umbilical cord. And, <laughs> and it was like this thick, fibrous... And then they brought her over, they dressed her, they weighed her, they gave her injection, they brought her over to me, wrapped her and put her on me. And then I had to get a bit of a procedure done with that, how he explained my ovary had a split in it. So they just stitched it up and, and did some work around my ovary and I got to hold her. And I guess this is a good time to mention how good our doctor was as well. Like if if you're in a position to get a, a private doctor, is that what we call them? Yeah, yeah private doctor, obstetrician. If you can choose your obstetrician. Yeah, if you can choose that. Oh, like definitely recommend that. Definitely go with someone that makes you feel at ease from the word go and you know not gives you like these massive excitement runs and then brings you down when things aren't that great because you probably well not you probably but um i guess everyone you know goes through like some scared periods but he made us feel comfortable from the word go and then when i was in there i was like i can't wait to see this guy like i was feeling a bit nervous before he came you in did, you developed a crush on him no, I just yeah, really, yeah. I, I really liked it. So then Miss Sani was born and she was the cutest thing I've ever seen in my whole life. And um, then you went with her for about half an hour, 45 minutes while I was getting work done. <laughs> and then they put me into recovery and they brought her to me and they were like, are you going to breastfeed? And I was like, oh, I'm going to try. I was so against like... It just freaked me out. Breastfeeding really freaked me out. I didn't like the thought of it. I didn't like, but I knew it was what the baby need, that all babies need, um, especially colostrum. So I was like, yeah, well, I'll give it a go. And then they put her on me and it hurt a lot. Like it really hurts, but I was like, it's fine. Yeah, she's she was a really good eater and she's been a really good eater ever since. She's like, She's a trooper when it comes to eating. Yeah. She takes after your side. Yeah, she really does. Try to stay as active as possible. So within like two days, she was up, she was walking. Um, you know, like obviously we didn't exert things. We didn't get her coming up and down the stairs as, um, as frequently as, you know, some other people might. What's going on? Um, but we got her moving. Doing? We got her doing just very, very light, like exercises, even with her hands. Um, so her recovery probably took around two weeks and then another two weeks to like be able to go for a walk um, up and down you know the street it was about five to six months postpartum i started my breath my fitness journey so i stopped breastfeeding and i started my fitness journey i've got six kilos to lose so i ended up putting on 75 was game day yeah so i got to 75 kilos and before i started ivf i was 53 kilos and at the moment i'm 59 oh. so i've got six and a half kilos to go a lot of people are like oh you know Sorry. don't wait don't count your scales and i 100 percent agree with everyone you know um we're not counting the scales we're looking at how much body fat percentage she's lost and how much muscle muscle tone she's increased so we'll do a full video on that mm. on another on another day okay so my endo it is true for me like pregnancy really helped my endo in the sense that i got heart sick except for those cyst days when they cyst that cyst first mm. 
I had no endo pain. So on a normal day before I was pregnant, I would have period pain and I would be like sluggish and it would hurt. But when I was pregnant, I didn't have that at all. So that was so good. And then breastfeeding, same deal. I didn't have any pain. Um, I had the afterbirth pains when your uterus is shrinking and it's like period pain, but nothing like endo pain. And then I stopped breastfeeding and I went and saw my fertility person and he recommended the best option is to keep breastfeeding uh, or to get pregnant again. And those two, those two things weren't an option for me because I had a lot of problems breastfeeding. I don't know if you follow me on Instagram, but I shared a couple of the stories mm. I had. I had infections in my nipple and like fucking mastitis over and over and it was so hard. I couldn't actually breastfeed. I was exclusively pumping for six months. And it's just, it was not okay. So I stopped that, I did that for five to six months and that was the best I could do. And then, um, yeah, so breastfeeding is awesome for endo. If you do have endo and you can breastfeed, it's the best, but I couldn't keep doing it. So I'm on the pill now. So the, I've got gotten back on the pill and hopefully the pill will hold my period. So I'm skipping my periods. Mm. So to wrap up the story, the very long winded story, that is seven months overdue. <laughs> um, yeah, so hopefully people still want to hear about it. Yeah, I don't think anyone gives a shit anymore. But if you do, um, yeah. So we had a really good. Yeah, I guess what I was saying before is I prayed every night that we we're gonna have a dream run, and I know that sounds like selfish. Um, but but because we went through so much. Yeah, to try we and went. Get yeah, pregnant. exactly. Like normally. We were very scared. Yeah, normally we pray for strength. Um, for whatever life throws at us, but yeah, this time I was like really asking for, for like just an not an easy run, but something that uh, that wasn't going to be emotionally draining, um, and that came through. Like we actually had, you know, looking back at it, it was like wow, that was the best thing, uh, the best outcome that we could possibly have asked for. Mm. It went very, very it went really smoothly, and we're really lucky. Mm. Oh, we forgot a massive part of the story. What? So guys, about two months after I gave birth, Giorgio fucking breaks his fucking arm, don't you? Yeah, so I snapped a tendon in my, my arm, that's why this one looks a bit like a yeah. chicken arm. So for the last fucking four months... We don't need to say fucking. Yeah, I can. For the last four months. Fucking four months. So a month, admit it to the people. A month after... A month after I, I have the injury, and then a month after that, two months after that, I go through surgery. So for like great timing for a broken arm. Um, and then so December I went in for surgery, and I couldn't hold the baby until like mid January, and even until probably about two weeks ago. Yeah, it's March. I couldn't Where are you going? Too much. But now I'm back, <laughs> and I'm doing ninety percent of the work. Like yeah, well I did a hundred percent of it for a while there. So. And that's your amazing. So I just remembered a very vital part of the story that I forgot, which is the recovering, re recovery, postnatal hormones. I don't like to say depression because I don't believe that it's depression, what I had anyway, but I do believe that it's your hormones coming back to normal. So I gave birth and I was fine and then five days passed and I was like, oh, okay, I didn't get the baby blues, which is everyone talks about and I'm really lucky so I was on a high and I was fine and then I got home I was in hospital for five days I got home and then all of a sudden I was crying every day I was exhausted my stomach hurt my nipples hurt this one time I was sitting right there and I looked at Bobby and I go Bobby and then I started crying and then I go, I miss our life together. I miss you because I couldn't spend any time with Bobby anymore, my dog, because all my time was taken up with Sani. And I was sad. So I started crying and then Georgia was laughing at me and it, it was a good time. But the the baby blues, I'm, I'm going to call them the baby blues, they went away after three weeks, which is, again, just my personal experience but totally normal. It wasn't all rainbows and butterflies. Um, there's a lot of ups and downs when you give birth and it's 
tough in the beginning with the sleep deprivation and trying to figure out who this little person is and what they need and you know it takes time to get in your groove but once you're in it happy days guys i won't get into it too much but because um, you'll probably start crying <laughs> no because i'm saving it for the wedding oh okay tell but me no, how good i am i'm incredibly proud of this and i guess the way that she's adapted through the whole journey there were so many like what ifs thrown at us and at the end of the day I don't think there was any what if in you. Doesn't make sense but I'll take it. It does. So many what ifs got thrown at us but there was no what if within you. Still doesn't make sense. <laughs> but thanks. I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> we have to go attend to our baby now. So. Slash work. Slash go back to work. Thanks, Rhonda. <laughs>